Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game has become a science fiction classic since its publication in 1985. Its premise, that a child prodigy could be trained to become Earth's greatest military leader against a race of seemingly hostile aliens, raises questions about the ethics of war, its psychological effects on soldiers, and the potential influences of the military on a democratic government. Ender's Game has become suggested reading for many military organisations, including the United States Marine Corps, for, as Wikipedia quotes, providing useful allegories to explain why militaries do what they do in a particularly effective shorthand way. Ender's Game was recognised as Best Novel by the 1985 Nebula Award and the 1986 Hugo Award in the genres of science fiction and fantasy. In 1999, it placed number 59 on the reader's list of modern library 100 best novels. Ender's Game is set in the not too distant future. Earth is ruled over by a global government which controls population and suppresses religion. Ender is what they call a third, meaning he is a third child. Third children are as a general rule illegal but waivers can be granted for the conception of a third based on the interest of the state. Ender's parents were granted such a waiver because it was devised by the government that the children of this couple in particular will be of high intelligence and may be useful to the war effort. Ender's two older siblings, Peter and Valentine, like Ender himself, are child geniuses. However, unlike Ender, each was branded unfit for fleet command in opposite ways. Valentine was too passive, Peter too aggressive. Ender, as it turned out, possessed equal qualities of both, a temperament the military was searching for in a child so that they could train him to become the leader they needed to win the war. I have to win this now and for all time, or I'll fight it every day and it will get worse and worse. War is one of the major underlying themes of Ender's Game. Everything Ender goes through, the war games in battle and the war itself, and even his personal feud with bullies, trains him to become the leader the international fleet has been looking for. Little attention is paid to the disturbing effects of the harsh style of manipulation and training Ender and the other children undergo until after the war, when the international fleet's Colonel Graf is put on trial for child abuse. Linked with the theme of war is the theme of politics. Ender himself does not involve himself in politics, but his sociopath brother, Peter, with the help of their sister, Valentine, does. Peter creates the personas of Locke and Demosthenes, two political thinkers who influence national policies through manipulating online conversation. Peter goes on to leverage this infamy into a position as hegemon or world leader in the global government after the war, ironically saving millions of lives by putting an end to the war between men that resumes the instant the war with the aliens is over. You're just what the world needs, a 12 year old to solve all our problems. It's not my fault I'm 12 right now, and it's not my fault that right now is when the opportunity is open. Right now is the time when I can shape events, the world is always a democracy in times of flux, and the man with the best voice will win. The names Locke and Demosthenes are allusions to John Locke, an Enlightenment thinker, and Demosthenes, a Greek statesman and orator. In Ender's Game, Locke and Demosthenes are assumed personas, political thinkers who represent two different approaches. Locke, Peter's online persona, is a moderate and is more of a pacifist and rationalist, whereas Demosthenes, Valentine's online persona, tends to support war efforts and represents a more nationalistic way of thinking. This is generally true of the historical figures as well. John Locke, who lived between 1632 and 1704, was an English philosopher interested in rational political organisation. By contrast, Demosthenes, who lived between 385 to 322 BC, was an Athenian politician most notable for strongly opposing Macedonia. This story arc represents how news and politics play out in the world and is one of the most intricate parts of the book. P. 
Peter's reasons for wanting to hold sway over the opinions of others are clear throughout. He wants power, and what's more, he has the intelligence and the Machiavellian inclinations to get it. Valentine, however, the kindest of the Wigan children, despite knowing Peter is a sociopath, still agrees to help him achieve it. The reasons for this are because Peter approaches Valentine about the state of the world. He sees a great war coming, and he says he's afraid that mankind is on the verge of destroying itself. He says he wants to stop it. Do you understand? I want to save mankind from self-destruction. She had never seen him speak with such sincerity, with no hint of mockery, no trace of a lie in his voice. He was getting better at this. Or maybe he was actually touching on the truth. So a 12-year-old boy and his sister are going to save the world? Of course, Valentine is very sceptical. She believes that her brother is clever enough and power-hungry enough to make a play of his own. Therefore, she is not immediately willing to help her brother. Peter eventually convinces Valentine, however, and it's never quite clear whether Peter's reasons are sincere or whether he has simply manipulated Valentine the way he manipulates everyone. They are, however, as Locke and Demosthenes, successful as online policy experts and debaters because their personas ultimately offer reading audiences something they want to believe in. It's through manipulating and controlling the conversational dialogue on both sides of the debate that they are able to sway public opinion into the direction they want it to take. Valentine, as Demosthenes, even manages to influence the opinions of her own unsuspecting father. Through these actions, Valentine helps set up the conditions for Peter, allowing him to step in and propose a plan for peace, and to eventually become a world leader. Their age and identities, once revealed, end up being irrelevant because readers want to believe in them. Peter, you're 12 years old. I'm 10. They have a word for people our age. They call us children and they treat us like mice. But we don't think like other children, do we, Val? We don't talk like other children. And above all, we don't write like other children. At the end of the book, Peter has become the leader that has united the factions of the world in peace, although his true intentions are still never revealed, and Valentine has used her own skills at manipulation to keep Ender from ever returning to Earth, knowing that if he were to return, Peter would use Ender's military influence and skill to further his own agenda. Welcome to the human race. Nobody controls his own life, Ender. The best you can do is choose to fill the roles given to you by good people, by people who love you.